In this video series, we're going to explore the basics for setting up and using Carlson's Field to Finish program. The Field to Finish program is designed to automate the drafting process from raw field data. We begin starting with a blank drawing in a coordinate file containing points from a field survey. If I look in the points ribbon and hit edit points, I can take a look at the points in this coordinate file. As you can see, each point has a description as entered in the field. We have iron pipe, hubs, utility poles, sheds, some trees, building locations, X, which indicates a spot shot, PV is pavement for a private driveway, EP is the edge of pavement for a public roadway, and we have some manholes. Now, a typical way to bring those points into the drawing is to simply draw locate points. By executing that command, you have some level of control in the appearances and placement of these points, such as a symbol you can set from the library, it's a points library, and a variety of other included libraries. This is set to a circle, SPT2. You can rotate the symbols. You can decide whether or not to label descriptions, elevations, point numbers. But typically, you just set the layer for the points to fall on. In this case, the default is PNTS for points, and you would simply hit Draw All. That effectively brings all the points in with their three attributes in place, the point number, elevation, and description. However, all points are on the same layer and contain the same symbol, and the line work is not present. So the next step would be to connect point to point to draw the line work that the field data represents. The edge of pavements, private driveway, lamp posts, house corners, etc. Field to finish is specifically designed to automate the entire process of drawing all that detailed information directly from the coordinate file and place it in the drawing on whatever layer using whatever symbols you might like. In addition, it will annotate and label in the forms of text or attributes every one of the points that you desire. So let's examine that process and start by creating an FLD file, a code table. To do so, I'm going to switch to the survey ribbon and execute field to finish. When I execute this command, the program scans the coordinate file and finds the range of point numbers. In this case, points 1 through 54. You can draw through field to finish by changing the range of point numbers or drawing by a point group. It also selects the last used FLD file. If you are first installing Carlson, you may not have ever selected an FLD file. Therefore, this would be blank and you would be prompted to first select one. It also displays the current coordinate file and a GIS table if we were using one. I'm going to create a new code table for this demonstration by hitting set and new. I am then going to create a new code table called topo and hit open. When I do so, I'm prompted for a method to populate the new code table with existing field codes. Carlson supports multiple formats from data collectors, but the option I'm going to use is code table by points. This option allows Carlson to populate the code table with the existing descriptions from the data set. As you can see, we are now set to the topo.fld. I will now hit edit codes and look at our code table. This is a very quick way to jumpstart an FLD file. Now there are some codes in here that are unnecessary and redundant. In this case we had one with described as IP and then parentheses 4 inch diameter. We also have an IP that doesn't have that information. I'm going to first delete the unwanted codes by selecting the IP 4 inch and delete, as well as the diameter. We have hub, UP, shed, and this IP, which we'll keep. The 18, 24, 12, and 8 are all trees. Building, light pole, spot shots. Looks like all the rest of our codes are in here. You can also add new codes one at a time by hitting the Add button. 
codes already in the code table can be edited by clicking on the Edit button, which is the procedure we're going to follow for this exercise. So let's just take the first code, examine that, and make some edits. So I highlight Hub and hit Edit. In the Edit Field Code Definition dialog box, you'll see a lot of options on how you want to handle each code. I'm not going to go through every single one, but I'm going to point out the most important ones and the critical ones to get your data to process properly. The first one is making sure that the processing is on. If you are in a situation where you would like to not process certain codes out of a data set, you can simply turn those off before processing. So let's start with the code itself. This code, in this case hub, is the code that is typed in the data collector as the description for the point. The field code name is optional. That is used for printouts and other reporting of those codes. It's also very beneficial if you want to report your code list and pass it on to someone else so they know what your codes are. So it's a good idea to go ahead and enter in a full code name. I'm going to enter in control point. The description can be the same as the code, but it doesn't have to be. In other words, you can have a very short two or three letter code here, and you can have a full description. The description is what is going to be placed in the drawing in the form of an attribute, the description attribute, or text. We'll explore those two options later. The layer is the layer that the point will be placed upon. I'm going to change that layer name to control points. We're going to leave the attribute format and the rest of these options alone for now. We are, however, going to create a point group. I'm going to make a point group called control points. The attribute size scaler scales the three individual attributes by the factor. In this case, it's point 0.1. I'd like to make that slightly smaller, 0.08. The entity type, which is critical, in this case is just a point. We're not going to be connecting lines between our hubs automatically. The feature type is also critical, and that is a topo. That is the generally used feature type, but there are options other than topo. You can have a tree and pipe. We will explore those features later as well. Then we can select a symbol from the symbol library I'm going to pick a triangle. There is a separate symbol size scalar that scales the symbol separate from the attributes. I am also going to make that 0 0.08. There is no need to add a line type because we are not collecting lines on this code. Then I hit OK and I move on to the next one. Utility poles. I will do the same thing. I edit that. Full code name will be utility pole. The description I'll leave as a UP. The main layer is utilities. This also is a point and I'll pick a symbol that represents a utility pole. The shed is going to go on a layer called buildings. And for the shed, I am going to connect my shed points with a 2D polyline. The difference between a 2D and a 3D polyline is that it will have a different elevation for every vertex along the polyline and is used by Carlson as break lines when creating a surface model. So it's very important on particular codes that need to be defined as break lines that they are drawing, in fact, a three-dimensional polyline. I'm not going to worry about a separate symbol for a shed. I'm just going to have it draw the line. Iron pipe. And I'm going to have iron pipe spelled out and this layer will be on monuments. The symbol, this is going to be a point only, the symbol we'll use is an iron pipe symbol. Now the next four codes are trees, 18D, 24D, 12P, and AP, which are the trunk size, the deciduous tree, or pine tree. Since they're all trees, I'm going to edit all four at the same time by clicking on the first one, holding shift and clicking on the last one in line that I wish to edit and hit edit. You see a different dialog box. 
These are the options that can be set globally throughout the code table. I'm going to start by using the symbol. I'm going to use a single tree symbol for all the tree types. So I go to my tree category. I'm going to pick a tree symbol. The symbol size, instead of the default symbol size scalar of 0.1, I'm going to change that to a 2 to make the trees cosmetically a little larger. I am then going to change the main layer to trees and hit exit. Then instead of editing these one at a time, I am going to enter a full name description of tree and then I can copy and paste that name in each one of the full name categories. If there are other options, as you can see what I have available here now, but if there are other options that you would like to see and be able to edit in this format as opposed to clicking on each one and editing it individually, you can adjust these by the column options and click or unclick each individual option you would like to see. The PL is just a location point along the property line. So we're going to edit that one, but I'm going to put this on a layer that can be turned off later on, and this layer will be called check points. It's just a point, a building, similar to the shed. the buildings layer and it too will be a 2d polyline a lamp post on the utility layer and we'll pick a symbol for that the X shot is a spot grain this will be on a layer called field points and we're going to give it a symbol an X Make that symbol 0.05 to make it smaller. The PV is the private drive pavement shot. I'm going to put this on a layer called pavement. Now this entity type will be a 3D polyline because the edge of the pavement should be considered a break line. Likewise, the edge of the pavement will go on the same layer and is also a three-dimensional polyline. Finally, a manhole, again on the layer utilities, and we'll select a symbol from the inlet and manhole category, and I'm going to use inlet number six, the hatched in circle, and hit OK. Save this, exit, and now we're ready to go ahead and process this data. As you can see, the line work was connected through all the PV shots, edge of pavement line was connected, trees were drawn, shed, and the building, as well as symbols brought in for utility poles, hubs, iron pipes, etc. If you look at this data in 3D using the 3D viewer drawing viewer and window in, all this data, you will see that the break lines as well as the point data are brought in at a true elevation. Two-dimensional objects such as the building and shed lines are not displayed in this viewer by default.